What's going on guys, this is Kazi. Welcome to another epic video. And today I'm gonna to be talking about something that is very obvious, it's in front of you, you use it every day, but it's more about how to actually use it properly and to your advantage. Talk to any top colorist and they will talk about this technique all day long and put all their emphasis on this. And they'll tell you that if you perfect this, you will be a pro colorist, okay? So again, like I said, this is not gonna be something that's gonna be revolutionary. It's some tool that you never even heard of. It's something that you've been doing it. I'm gonna help you do it better. And I promise you, after watching this video, you're gonna get that itch where you're gonna just pull up all the old footage that you have, and you're gonna try to regrade it to see what else you can get out of that footage. So without any further ado, if you're a beginner filmmaker who wants to make their work stand out, color grading is one of the most effective ways to do that. If you're coming from Premiere Pro or Final Cut 10, then looking at a node-based software like Resolve will just confuse the heck out of you. In this free training, you're not only gonna learn everything about nodes, you will also learn to build the perfect node tree regardless of the project that you're working on. I will end the session with an extended Q&A. These questions came from you guys. Click the link in the description to sign up for this free training. All right, before we jump into our video, let's do talent spotting for this week. And today I wanna give a shout out to Brian Strombeck. This guy, I have so much respect for him. He is one of the most consistent people that I know. And uh, his attention to detail is genuinely next, next level. And I'm so happy that he's part of our FCM family. So go give him a follow, show him some love. And guys, if you're enjoying the content, you know what to do. Smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. Make sure you're following me on Instagram and let's roll the intro. You're about to learn the power of balancing your shot. This is, I'm telling you, the single most important skill you can gain in your color grading career. So many people overlook this and it's not one of those that you can just survive without having a full command over this one technique. So let's start out with building our node tree. I'm gonna keep it pretty simple and then I'll take you through step by step. So I'm gonna, mm, let me see. I think I'm gonna do seven nodes in this one, okay? So the first one is going to be our offset. It could also be your temp and tint. This one, I'm gonna call it my primaries. This one is going to be my pop. Here, I'm gonna do my log wheels. This one is going to be my HSL curves. And then, you know what? I'm also gonna do a parallel for this specific example and then this is going to be my cyan node number eight is going to be my glow and then this one is going to be my grain now these two obviously are not necessary i can just put them down here these are basically extracurricular you don't need to do it but you're going to see how big of a difference it makes but let's just jump in first step to getting your image balanced properly is starting off with either temp or tint, or in this case, I'm gonna be using offset. So what do we see in this image? There's way too much red right here in our scopes. I mean, just look at the red to the green to the blue, right? So it's pretty freaking dominant. So let's take that out. And I'm gonna use my offset and I'm gonna start just subtracting it. Like I'm gonna go in the opposite direction. And I'm just kind of seeing, I'm eyeballing it to like what my image actually looks like too. and. What I'm really anchoring on right now is his skin. Like as long as his skin is somewhat in the ballpark, I'm pretty much going in the right direction. So if I do before and after, like look at how much of that red we were able to take out. And you can even see that in the vector scope that we're like now hitting the middle point right here, which means our image is pretty well balanced and without sacrificing anything major, okay? So this is where I'm just gonna leave my first step. Like, let's just keep it simple. In this step right here, we're gonna do our primaries. This is where I'm gonna get a bit aggressive. I'm gonna start with my lift, and I'm really gonna start creating some solid 
separation in my image. So I'm gonna pull it down something like that. And now obviously it looks too blue. So I'm gonna take my gamma and bring the skin back. Now I'm gonna just take it up, go too far, obviously always, and then kind of pull it back. So I'm just focusing on the skin right now. I don't necessarily want my image to be too blue or too yellow. I want to keep it somewhere just in the middle looking, you know, somewhat natural, but still with a lot of style. So let me pull this down a little bit more and kind of keep it in that world. Like I said, I'm going to take my gamma and just add a little bit more life into his skin. So even something like that, that's looking good. Okay. So this is where we started. This is where we are. This is the magic of balancing. You want to latch on to some anchors. So I want to keep my lights looking yellow tungsten, if you will. I want to make my skin look good. And as long as those two things are looking good, the rest is just going to fall into place. Now in our pop, we're just going to use our contrast slider. And I'm going to start giving it some contrast, not too much. I'm going to kind of pull it back, keep it pretty open, like something like that. It looks pretty good. If I do before and after, I mean, just look at it, right? Now in my log wheels, I'm going to go under my log wheels. I'm going to take my shadow and uh, I'm going to just try to pull some of that blue out. Keep it somewhere around here. And if I do before and after, we're not really doing much, to be honest. So what I want to do is I want to go into my primaries, go back into my lift gamma gain and kind of push it even more. I just want to kind of exaggerate it. And then I'm going to go under my gamma and just like really raise that up to something like that. So now if we go into my log wheels, I'm going to take my shadows and I'm going to kind of just go places with it. So even if we park it somewhere around here, the whole idea is to create some sort of a style and create as much separation as possible. I'm going to take my mid-tone and I'm going to start adding a little bit of more warmth, like orange, if you will. So I'm going to keep it somewhere around here. If I do before and after, you start to see the difference. I mean, right behind him, like we're going from yellow to that really nice orange. And then we're adding a bit more blue in the overall image. We can see it over here too. So now in my HSL curves, what I really want to do is a couple of different things. I'm going to go under my yellow hue versus hue, and I'm going to swing it until it's a bit more on the red side. So I like that. I'm going to go under my hue versus hue for reds, and I'm just going to uh, focus on the skin and kind of warm it up just about the right amount, something like this. And now what I want to do is under my uh, cyan, I just want to kind of go under luminance and pull it down not too much something like that i don't want to i don't want to do anything extreme and the reason being is that i have a node right here where i'm going to make that change i'm going to go under my vectors presets and i'm going to select my cyan okay i'm just going to pick my cyan and it does an excellent job picking that out now i'm all i have to do is just go under my saturation and then just dial it back a little bit so it's not distracting and then the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go under my highlights slider and I'm going to kind of just crank it back and it's a very realistic way to kind of control those highlights and just look at that before and after and if I take these two and do before and after like look at how digital and weird it looks to like how natural and we just brought back so much dynamic range and then this is guys come on I mean you know this is the magic of understanding how to balance your image to create enough separation. Now, somebody might say, hey, this is not well balanced because your black points are not like really all, you know, neutral. And that's totally true. But I'm trying to create separation in my image, color separation. I'm still going for a look, stylized look. It's not hard for me to balance out my black points. I mean, all I have to do is if I go under my log wheel, just to give you an example, I can just do that and bring it really close. And then all of a sudden my black points are going to be even, but that's not what I'm going for. I'm going for a really cool look. Okay. So now let's go to our glow. 
node, I'm going to go under here and I'm going to drop on blow. And then in here, let's go to our composite mode and we're going to select my favorite, which is soft light. I'm going to take my threshold and start cranking it back, not all the way. I'm going to keep it, I want to make it like super moody. So I'm going to put it somewhere around here and uh, I'm going to open this up, go into my blend, start dialing it back. And you know what? I want to take my threshold and kind of close it off a bit more and now go to my blend and keep it somewhere around here. So if I do before and after, I mean the blend and just overall glow is making a huge difference. Let me try to open up my glow a little bit, close it off, and then maybe take the brightness and crank it, maybe not too much. So even somewhere around here, if I do before and after, it looks really nice. Then under my grain, obviously, I'm going to throw my favorite 35 millimeter 400T, and then I'm going to crank it. I'm just, you know, I love grain, loud and proud. I don't care. So I'm just going to like really go big. Maybe something like that. And if I do before and after, it's pretty substantial. If I punch in and show you guys, I mean, the grain that I'm adding is pretty insane. Maybe we can dial back a little bit. Strength. All right. I'm not going to go any less than that. Like this is where I'm going to draw the line. And then that's my grain. Now, two additional steps that I would add to this image to really, really pop it out would be creating another node right here and just calling it global adjustment. Okay. And in this one, what I want to do is I want to go under my highlights. I want to take my highlights in my log wheels and crank it to about 25, 26 ish. So just park it somewhere around here. Nothing really happens. I'm going to take my high range and start cranking it back. Okay. So right now my focus is this girl. I want to pop her out. Like that's my focus anyways, right? Like it's all about that painting and what's going on there. So I'm going to keep that somewhere around here. And if I do before and after, I mean, just look at how much of the image we're popping. Now, obviously we're blowing out some highlights and things too. So in order to fix that, I'm going to go here. I'm going to create a node prior to my first node. I'm going to call it highlights. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under my HDR and uh, I'm just going to go under my highlights and try to crank it back. Um, obviously, I don't want to do too much. I just want to do enough. And really, um, uh, my eyes are right here. Like I'm just trying to bring this down. And uh, I don't care about the specular highlights if they clip because they're supposed to clip. Um, but just look at how easily it controlled all of this without touching anything else. Before you had to like go under qualifier, Luma qualifier, select that and do all that. So I, I've been having a blast with HDR palette. Obviously, I still use that technique. There's a time and place for everything. But this is really um, speeding up the entire workflow for me. So if I now grab all of it, kill it and start from the top and then take you through what it means to properly balance your image and then to create a look around that to get the most color separation out of your image, you have to do this in the proper order. OK, that's why I have a whole training on nodes and how to build the proper node tree. So first step, we started with our offset just to start creating some color separation and then I use my primaries my lift gamma gain to further uh, create color separation and then we just use our contrast slider to add some pop and um, use my log wheels to just you know more color contrast if you will and then in my HSL curve same exact thing just kept you know swinging hues to create more separation and then this one was pretty major. We just went in and just look at on the vector scope, like how nuclear the cyan is. And I just grabbed it, used my vectors, 
super simple, and then pull that back. Then my ultimate favorite technique um, added this glow. And there's so many things that glow does, right? So not just the blooming effect, which make it makes it look like film, but it's almost like having multiple power windows, if you will, because it's putting the emphasis where it's supposed to go. So this is the narrative. This is the story. I want to see her. I want to see him. I don't care about anything else. So it just in such an organic way takes the emphasis off of everything else and puts it where it's supposed to go. And then we added grain. You know, my grades are never complete without a grain. And then I showed you a really cool technique to just give your image that final 3D look or that pop and just look at how it brought, again, that information to life. And then obviously we had some blown out highlights. I went in and corrected that and just brought all of that back by using the HDR palette. And this is our final look, guys. So like where we started to where we ended up, let's check it out in full screen. So there you have it, guys. Balance, balance, balance. That's the name of the game when it comes to color grading, whether you're working on a documentary or a interview sort of situation, or if you're working on a short film, it does not matter. If, even if you're creating really extreme looks, balancing goes a long way. And especially when it comes to shot matching, nothing will save your behind more than balancing. So work on it, give it a shot. Like I said, pull up some projects that you already worked on and try these techniques that I showed you in here. Do not forget to watch my free training. I'm telling you, none of it matters if you don't understand what goes where. What's the difference between parallel node versus layer mixer? So you really need to understand all those things. My training gives you all of that and then some. So check it out. Link is in the description. On that note, smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. And I want to see you guys in the next video.